Let's see how to add simple configs to our fabric mod. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how you can add some simple configs to a config file, which the user or users can then basically change and influence, uh, well, some values inside of your mod. And the way that this is going to work is I actually found a fairly simple and, yeah, I mean, great uh, Java class made by someone else. So right here, you can see this is the fabric simple libs by the user Magister Max. And in the simple config right here, we actually have a very simple config class. It's very well done and fairly easy to understand. And this is basically the class that we're going to take. Uh, what I do want to mention is that please keep in mind that this is basically distributed with the MIT license in mind, as you can see. So please make sure to think about that when you, you know, if you want to use this as well. And what we're going to do is we are going to copy over the class anyway. So no worries there. Um, but of course, it does have the copyright notice in as well. So first of all, we're going to make a new config package here. So inside of our tutorial mod package, new package config. Then first of all, I'm going to copy over the simple config Java class. This is, of course, available. And this notice here, you cannot delete. If you delete this, then you're actually making basically infringement, copyright infringement. This has to stay there. And as you can see, I also slightly modified this. This is genuinely a tiny modification. It's, I think, like literally just these two lines right here. Now, the reason is going to be apparent in just a moment when we're actually going through how this works. But overall, the simple config is great. It works very well. And I basically made two custom classes to sort of accommodate it. And hopefully I will walk you through how to use it. And it really is not that difficult. It's fairly simple and hopefully you will understand everything. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I am actually going to copy over the other two classes as well. They are, of course, available for you in the description below, either a GitHub repository or an individual gist. That is the mod configs class and the mod config provider. And I will actually explain, you know, what those do, what is happening here and all of that. We're basically going to go through this. Uh, the first thing that we actually need to do is in the mod configs class right here, we will actually all that and what's very important is that this needs to be the first thing that you call in the on initialize method here so on configs dot register configs so this is very important because we want the configuration to be loaded in before everything else happens so that we can for example change the durability of an item which is the actual application we're going to see in just a moment and that's actually very important to actually call that method before everything else now let's first of all go through the mod configs class right here so this simply has a simple config field right here. All of this is basically static. And this here, right, the simple config.of is basically creates a new file, right? The file name is going to be tutorial mod. So our mod ID plus config. The reason I've chosen this is simply because, well, if there is the chance that another mod, if you have a mod pack in fabric, if there is another mod that adds this and just calls their you know, actual config file config, then you will have a lot of issues because then there are going to be conflicts and stuff like that. So we will just stick with our tutorial mod because no one should have our mod ID as well as that. That would be, you know, that would be pretty crazy. What we do here is, of course, first of all, we're creating sort of this mod config provider here. That is something that um, we can actually go into. This is also a sort of a class that I made myself. Now this implements, however, the default config interface from simple config itself. And what this really does is it has a get method. And the get method are going to be a string of the contents that it is going to write into the file. And the file is basically structured in, this, in the following way. You have a comment which basically starts with a hashtag. Usually I have the modified version. Usually you only can have basically either a value inside of a line or a comment. I modified it in such a way where you can actually have first a line basically with a value and then also a comment after it. And I'm going to show you, you know, this is basically the reason why I wanted to add some kind of nice features to it. This is the idea. So with a hashtag, you make a comment and with something like, you know, some key equals and then you put in the value. So uh, this here is going to be the key. And this is going to be the value. So that is why we have some key value pairs here. It should be fairly obvious there. And for every basically value we want to add, we have to call this add key value pair method here. So 
you know, this is overall not the craziest thing. Uh, this basically just creates the actual line here. So this adds to the string right here. So we always get the key, which is equal to the value. And then we're also adding the hashtag to make a comment. And then we add the comment that we will actually provide via a parameter here. And then we'll also add a sort of default value. So we're going to say, okay, this is going to be the default value. You can change this one, but this is going to be the default. Another modification you might be able to do is something like give it a bound. So in an upper and a lower bound to basically say, hey, this value should be between this number and this number, and you shouldn't go above it. So for example, if you have something like a a spawn rate for a particular mob or an entity, then you could say, hey, you shouldn't make this above 10 because if you make it above 10, then you know nothing else spawns, something like that. That's just another idea that you could do. We don't need to look at the simple config file anymore. We don't need to look at the mod config provider. Hopefully uh, everything here is sort of understood. It's not actually too crazy. Once again here, Java knowledge absolutely just gets you really far into the door with this because basic Java, this has nothing to do with, you know, how the game works. You could pretty much use this and the simple config file and the mod config provider. You could use all of that outside of modding, outside of fabric very easily. So that's something to consider as well. Now, what we have here in the mod configs file, this is sort of the main file, right? We have this assign configs method and we have the create configs method. The create configs method does the following. It basically adds key value pairs to the mod config provider. This is then what is later written into the actual file. So our first value pair, the key is going to be key.test.value1. And then the string value it has is going to be just a testing string. And in the comment, we're just going to write string, basically signifying what type of variable this is. This is sort of the idea that I came up with to basically add in, okay, what type is it? And then afterwards, you will also see sort of the default value, which is always what we're going to pass in right here. So this is sort of the idea. We can pass in 50 and then, you know, something else and then something else as well. So as you can see, I've already made the dowsing.rot.max.damage as a sort of key here. You can also go with a different type of keying, right? So you can call this basically whatever you want. However, just make sure that they are unique. That is the most important thing here. So now the question comes in, why do we assign configs? Well, this is either writing the actual file or if it already exists, we're reading the file. And we're reading the file in and this is then saved in this config field here. And we can then call the get or default method, which we will pass in a key right here. This is, of course, as you can see, the same key as we have passed in there. And then we also define a default, which is returned if this key doesn't have any value associated with it. So if, for example, we make a typo in here, then we would get nothing returned instead of this. And instead of just, you know, throwing an error, we still could possibly use this just that we have an error or just a warning maybe somewhere. Uh, so what I advise to do is for each value you add, you need to call the add key value pair method right here, right? With the key and the value and a comment that should be self-explanatory. You will also need a public static field with, you know, some particular name. You can think of the name, of course, yourself, which is of the type of the actual value that you add, right? So this is, of course, a string here, the first one. So this is a string. This is an integer. So this is an integer. This is a double. So this is a double, right? So this is an integer. This is an integer. Should be fairly self-explanatory. And in the assign configs, we actually assign the ones that were read in through the config file. So this is very important. This if the config doesn't exist, creates the config. This assigns the actual values that have been written in the config file, whether or not it was just written from the code or whether or not a user has modified it. So that's very important here. And then you will also get this system out here just to basically confirm, hey, this many configs have been read in so that you can basically just make sure and check that everything has been read in properly. And this is pretty much it. So what we can do is I'm actually going to just start this and we will actually have to, you know, take a look at this because the actual config file is then created in the run folder under the config right here. So not under the fabric folder, but just the normal one. And what is going to happen is as soon as, you know, this one has run through here, as soon as we're here, we can quit the game and then the actual IDE should also reload. And you can see tutorial mod 
config.properties has been created and it should look pretty much like this. So if we open this, you can see there you go. Key.test.value1 is just a testing string. And then we have the hashtag, which of course signifies that after this, you know, everything after this is basically a comment. And this is what I added. So if you only have the normal simple config from the repository this actually doesn't work so you need to take mine or you know modify this yourself as well so this modification here because usually as you can see it only looks for a start with the hashtag but it doesn't actually look at it after you've already done it so this is just a little modification and then you can also see the default of whatever it is so what we can for example do is we can change this to 64 and once we've changed this, and once this file exists right here, it is actually going to not be modified by the code anymore. So this one, right, the simple config of, is going to request sort of, hey, does this file exist? If the file exists, then it's just going to read it in. If it doesn't exist, then it's going to create it. So that's the idea here. And how do we use those values? Well, we use those values very, very easily. So in our mod items class, for example, I can go to the dowsing rod and you can see it has 10 damage for the time being. But now what I will do is I will say mod configs dot max damage dowsing rod. And now whatever we have put into the properties file here is actually going to be the max damage of this item. Therefore making it possible, you know, for people either be, may be mod pack developers or mod pack makers to, uh, you know, identify some stuff where, well, maybe we want to rebalance a few things. And you can do it like that, make this open for them, and then they can change all of the stuff around. And you should be able to use these values anywhere in your code. And they, they should, I mean, just work. It's sort of like the funny, you know, funny saying that we have sort of have in the in the channel, but it just works. It's, it's fairly straightforward. It's not the most robust thing. So this might break if the user, you know, does some, I mean, let's say stupid stuff in here, right? So if they, you know, make like, oh, we're going to do this or something like that, then it might break. That's totally fine. You can, of course, always add a comment being like, hey, make sure that this is formatted correctly, you know, and stuff like that. But that would probably be not the worst thing ever. Right, and just for the sake of argument, I am actually going to show you that this has worked. So if we now start the game, we will soon see that the dowsing rod will have a 64 max damage or 64 durability. So let's see if it works. All right, we find ourselves in Minecraft once more. And as you can see, I have the dowsing rod here. I will now switch to survival mode and I'm just going to click, you know, we can just generate like almost as you can see it has way more than 10 durability and it also definitely has more than 32 i mean i've been clicking basically non-stop here and now it has been broken and you know you could probably count that but i also don't think that that's necessary it has 64 durability just like we have assigned it inside of the config file so that's actually how easy it is to add custom configs to fabric and also just that you see it here, all four have been set properly. So this should probably say all four config values have been set properly. But fair enough, this does seem to be working totally fine. So as you can see, everything is great. Right, once again, this is of course just one way that you can add configs to your fabric mod, right? This, you know, simple config Java class is pretty much just pure Java. So if you know some Java yourself, you could, of course, write something yourself as well. So once again, sort of an appeal for you to maybe take a look at a little bit of Java. I will keep saying this. And if this at some point is annoying, then that's just how it's going to be. But whatever the case may be. All right. Hello, Count and Joe from the future here. And I just wanted to quickly mention that using the mod configs in either the mod items, the mod blocks or anywhere where you are registering a particular thing in your mod, right? So basically using it something like here. It's actually a very bad idea because if the value of your configs in the client and the server doesn't match, then you're going to have a bad time. I wanted to mention this. So this is actually a very bad example. I'm very sorry for this. I have not yet had the time to fix it properly. Uh, I just wanted to mention, don't use it in mod items, mod, you know, mod blocks or anywhere you're, where you are registering things. You could use it, for example, inside of an item possibly, right? So inside of here, that might work. Otherwise, be very careful where you actually use your configs because 
if they mismatch from the server and the client, then it's going to have a very bad user experience. So once again, very sorry for the confusion here. Sometimes this happens. So once I have a solution for this, I will publish a new video and it will be linked in the description below in a comment and in a card, all of that jazz. So thank you very much. And once again, I'm very sorry. That would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.